Hi guys, welcome back to another Comfy UI video guide. Today, we will go through the basic workflow of Comfy UI to get you started and the basic understanding of its user interface. When you first launch Comfy UI, you're presented with a simple default basic text to image workflow. You will understand more about these workflow once we create our own and you can follow along. But before that, let's quickly go over the user interface. If you scroll on your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out in your work area. You can also use this plus and minus tool down here. If you hold your mouse wheel while moving, you can pan around the area. You can also switch to the pan tool or the select tool from the toolbar menu down here. The pan tool can be used to pan the area but will not be able to select nodes or objects. To select them, switch back to the Select tool. A little eye icon down here is to toggle on and off on the connected graph lines. We will leave it on to better understand the workflow. To the lower left, you can change from dark mode to light mode. We'll go dark. You can check the comfy UI settings down here. You can also change the line graph style here. So instead of the default spline, you can have straight lines which can make things look cleaner. And then you have Q button here. Originally, you see it somewhere down here by default. But I like to dock this on the top so it won't be in the way of my work area. This is what you press to start generating. Next to it is the batch count. Next to that is the cancel and clear button. This here toggles the log panel to the bottom of the screen. This panel will show you all the updates in real time. For example, if you start generating an image, there will be a progress bar down here. We'll close it for now. Next to this, we'll show or hide UI menus. And of course, we got the comfy UI manager extension. And we got the model extension. The two important extension that I talked about in the previous video over here, we have some real-time resource monitor. You probably won't see this because this is also an extension. You can get the extension by searching for it here if you are using Stability Matrix to run Comfy UI or search for custom nodes in the Comfy UI Manager. You want to search for Cry's tools and install it. You probably need to reset Comfy UI to see the resource monitor up at the top. Over to the left, we have our Workflow tab. Here, we can add a new workflow or close them as you would with any browser tab. We're just going to close the default workflow because we will build a new one from scratch so I can explain the workflow. In the workflow menu, we can start a new one. We can open a workflow. Say you downloaded a workflow online. You can open them here. Alternatively, you can also just drag and drop the workflow file into the work area. Next, we have some basic templates to start off on. We have basic text to image generation, image to image, to pass upscale and basic flux workflow. Let's check out image to image. This is very basic, but you get the idea. You load an image here, load a model, type in your prompt, and your generated images will appear here. All right now, time for what you guys are here for. Let's start making a new workflow together so you can understand the basic idea on how things work in Comfy UI. You can start by right-clicking, then add some nodes. But if you are new to this, you'd most likely be confused, so think of it this way. What do we need first to generate an image? A model, right? So we can search for node that would load a model, loader and load checkpoint. A better way is to just double-click on the empty area and search for load and find load checkpoint. So let's observe this checkpoint loader. We can click on the model name to see a drop-down list of all the models we have installed. But if you don't know which is which, this is why we installed the model manager. Open up model manager and go to checkpoint because we are loading a checkpoint. Now all you have to do is drag and drop a model into the model checkpoint loader. As you can see here, you can load up the model by dragging and dropping in. Now, what do we need? Well, there are three outputs here to get a sense of what else we need. The easiest way 
is to drag the connectors here and it will give you a suggestions on what nodes to use this with. We can add a K sampler to control the model sampling methods and steps. If we look at the K sampler nodes, we see that it needs a positive prompt, negative prompt, and latent image to control the image resolution. So we can also drag this lines out and it will show a suggestion. In this case, we want a clip text encode. We can see that the checkpoint loader needs a clip while the K sampler needs a positive text prompt. And we will need another one for the negative prompt box. So we can connect the checkpoint clip line to the clip line on the prompt node. If you came from Automatic 1111, you may remember a set clip setting. We can add them here too. Search for clip set. In Automatic 1111, the clip sets from 1 to 2 going up. In here, it goes from negative 1 to negative 2, etc., but they are the same function. If we are using this, instead of connecting the clip from the checkpoint loader to the prompt, we want to first connect it to the clip set node. Then from there, we can extend to the prompt nodes in the same manner. Let's move this over to the side. You can see that the flow goes from loading a checkpoint model, which then goes to a clip set and into the prompt boxes, and then feed to the K sampler to handle the rest. As you can see, the K sampler is asking for one more thing, a latent image. Once again, we can drag this out and it shows a list of suggestions. And what we're looking for is something related to latent image. We want an empty latent image. This will control our image resolution. Let's change this to 768 pixel on the height for portrait images. Remember to not go too high as stable diffusion models are trained on lower resolution, we will leave the batch size to 1. We will, of course, need to upscale the image later to have it in 4K. Now we have one last thing. Drag this out and we want to decode everything into an actually image file. So we need a VAE decoder. This is the finish step to output our image. We can use save image nodes or preview image nodes. If we use the save image node, all generations will be automatically saved to our output folder. But if we don't want it to automatically save all the time in the case of bad generation, we can use a preview image node instead. This preview node will show the result of your generation without automatically saving them to your PC. So in order to save it, view the image, right click and manually saving it. And we are basically ready to generate an image. This is the basic workflow of generating an image from text prompt. Let's go over the K sampler real quick. All these settings control how your image will be generated. You most likely want to leave everything as is, but change the sampler and scheduler to see what works best of what models you've selected. But let's start from the top. We have the seed that is set to randomize. So each time we generate it, we'll generate a completely different image. If we want to keep the same image, we can select Fix to stop the seed from randomly generating numbers. Next up is Steps. This is the number of steps the AI model goes through to generate the image. The higher the steps, the more refined or detailed your image becomes, but takes longer time to generate. Anywhere between 20 to 30 is good enough. We'll leave it at 20 for now. Next is CFG, or Control Strength Guidance. You are guiding how the AI interpret your prompt. The higher the number, the more it will strictly follow your prompt. But this can result in less creative image. The lower the number, the more creativity you are allowing the AI to do. For SD 1.5 models, I think anywhere between 6 to 15 is good. Then you have your sampler models and scheduler. You can play around with this to see which combination works best for your model. The results varies between different models. Some models are better with Euler Normal, while others are better with DPMPP, or plus plus two M and Keras just seems to be more refined for most of my models. So we will select that for now. As for the denoise, we can leave this at one. We only need to worry about this when we're doing image to image or upscaling. I think we're good, right? What else are we missing? Maybe we can try to generate an image now and see if we're missing something. 
Before that, let's move things around to make it look a little cleaner, and then we'll try to generate an image. Okay, now it looks a little cleaner. Something else we can do with these nodes is to change the color. Right-click on it, go to Color, and let's select Green for the Positive Prompt node. Let's do the same for the Negative Prompt node. Actually, let's make it red. If we want to change multiple nodes' color at the same time, we can hold Control while clicking on all the nodes we want to change. Then right-click on one of them, go down to Color, and select a color. I think we'll go with Cyan. Alright, as you can see, Comfy UI workflow is highly customizable to fit your preferences. Now we can put all of them into a group if we want. Right-click, Add Group, Name the group, drag the group window to cover all the nodes. And now all the nodes are inside this group. So if we move the group around, we move them all at the same time. You can still move each nodes independently inside the group, or even move them back out of from the group. If you hold control and drag, you can create a box to enable multiple selection. With this, you can move all the nodes out of the group. This will detach it from the group, and they will no longer be associated with the group. And we can simply put them all back in the group again. You can change any of these nodes' names by double-clicking on the node's title. All right, let's try to generate something simple. Describe what you want to generate in the positive prompt box, and in the negative prompt box, our list of things you do not want in the generation. For this tutorial, we won't go into details about prompting, so we will go with simple things. And let's generate. Oh, see, we have an error here. We forgot to connect our VAE. You can connect the VAE directly from the checkpoint loader nodes, like so, if your model includes VAE file. Not all models do, but we want to manually select our own VAE file. So we're going to undo this link. Double click anywhere in the work area. Search for VAE loader. Select load VAE. Now we can link this VAE here instead to the VAE decoder and select the proper VAE file. These are for SD 1.5 models. You may not have these files, so I will show you where you can download them. Go to Hugging Face and search for Stability AI to get into their official Hugging Face page. Scroll all the way down, expand models, then go all the way down to the Stable Diffusion 1.5 original VAE, these two down here, get in, go to Files and Versions. You want to download either of these two files and place them in the VAE folder in your model directory. Data folder, model, VAE. I created a folder for Flux VAE and SD, 1.5 VAE, just to keep them separated. Now we should be able to generate an image. This should take four to six seconds for me. All right, it's that quick. This is a decent basic image. After all, we have a simple prompt. We can get the image to be better and even look better with better prompting and settings. We can even get better faces with upscaling. To show this, I will load one of my own workflow that's more complete. So here is my workflow. We have the basic text to image section, which is basically the same workflow as the one we made in this tutorial. However, I added some of my own things like notes and seed control, and I extended the workflow by adding an upscale group. I also added a switch to toggle the upscale group on or off. However, we won't go through all that in this video. We will go through this in depth in the next video tutorial about upscaling in Comfy UI. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. For now, I just want to give an example on how we can get better images. We want to generate an image with the upscale off, as it will take longer to generate with upscaling. So we only want to turn on upscale on images we want to keep. All right, that took about four seconds, and this is already looking better. So now we want to generate the upscaler. To do this, we have to clip the seed here 
so it won't generate a completely different image for the upscale process. Now we activate the upscale, and if we generate again, it will only run the upscale and will skip base generation. You can see the progress bar here. Upscale will take a little bit longer. And the finished result will appear here. All right, it finished. That took a few seconds longer. We now have a nicer looking image here with 2x higher resolution and even her face looks better. We can also add a compare node to see the comparison between the base image and the upscale image. All right, we generated a new upscale to compare here. Here is the upscale. Here is the base image, upscale, base. Her face in the base image is a little blurry. Now watch the upscale, much cleaner. It's not an exact one-to-one -one image as the AI pretty much reconstruct the image in higher resolution based on the original image. But as you can see, it's a much better and sharper and more refined image overall. Even her hands and fingernails looks better. To save the image, be sure to save the correct one. If we want to save the 2x resolution upscale image, we can right-click and select Save Here. Alright, I think that concludes our video for today. We will go into more details about my workflow and all the upscaling method in Comfy UI in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe so I can make more videos, and comment if you need any help. See you in the next one.